Uh, I'm beginning the engine disassembly now, and uh, here I'm going to try to get more step-by-step -step procedures. Uh, I've got the head off. First step is to remove the cam chain tensioner. Uh, on my 2000 model, there's a black air box that attaches to this bracket assembly. So I've, meant, I've labeled this tube so I don't forget where that goes. Once the cam chain tensioner comes off, you can remove the exhaust side feed guide for the cam chain. After that, you can do removal of the cap that goes on the uh, intake cam. Okay, next up, uh, remove the caps from the camshafts. This is the intake side. We'll do that first. I've gone through and loosened all the bolts. Once the bolts are loose, notice they have a, a female you can feed in here uh, in order to, to jostle it and pull it loose from the dowel pins that are underneath. These won't just pop right off. You gotta you gotta push pull these a little bit. There's these dowel pins that seat these down. I'm gonna be putting all these caps and associated bolts in a little tool organizer here. Same routine on the next big cap. You might need to take a little hammer, hope uh, preferably a little rubber mallet. I don't have one handy. Just to tap on either side, just to break those dowel seats loose a little bit. And again, just kind of work it real gentle back and forth, and it should pop right off. There we go. And at this point you have full access to the cam. The chain has been loosened enough, you'll be able to pull this right out. And then you repeat the, repeat, uh, repeat the procedure for the uh, exhaust side. Okay, I've just finished taking the camshafts out. I've gone ahead and let the chain drop uh, since I'm going to be disassembling the motor anyway. Normally you'd want to put a wire under the chain and hold it up and out of the motor if you're just doing a, a valve adjustment. Uh, that's done. Uh, next you can remove the pin and the chain guide from the intake side comes right out the top. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll show this right now. If you've never done a valve adjustment, uh, I'll show you what the, the buckets and shims are all about. Uh, atop every single valve in this motor, both intake and exhaust side, is what we call a, a shim and a bucket. This piece is called the bucket because I assume when you turn it upside down it looks like a bucket. Usually stuck on the inside bottom of the bucket is a spacer. And these spacers are what adjust your valves. And you can buy a kit or just go to your local shop uh, to get small changes in these spacers to do your valve adjustments. And like I said, for now I'm going to leave this assembly uh, on here. This just sits right on top of the valve spring. And the shim sits right on top of the valve stem. And then we're good. The lobes of the cam are what press down on these buckets, which actuate all your valves. Uh, to remove the head assembly, we've got two bolts on either side. On the right-hand side, uh, these bolts are recessed along the engine case side, and it's a little hard to get a socket on those. So I'm just going to use a standard Allen key, and I've already pre-loosened these. We pull these right off, and we repeat the procedure on the other side. Alright, now I've spun my motor around to the other side. Here's the left hand side. There's two cap bolts that hold the head on. You might find that you need a longer lever to get these loose. These are pretty tight. And especially if the motor is out of the frame, you'll need someone to hold the motor while you lever this over. With both of these loose, these should be the four mounting bolts right and left for the head. There's washers on here as well that you'll want to pull off. 
Okay, I've got my outer engine head bolts off. Now we got to work our way through the eight Allen head bolts that are on the interior. Uh, these have been torqued down with 36 pounds and have been sitting in there a while, so they're going to be pretty snug. You want to make sure you're using a 6 millimeter socket with a nice long lever uh, to break each one of these loose. And this is a case where you don't want to use the wrong tool. If you bugger one of these uh, bolts right here, uh, you're going to have a bit of a problem. Take a break. Stop the video. Okay, I repositioned the motor a little bit. And uh, with all the bolts removed, the four on the outside of the head and uh, the eight additional on the inside, uh, the, the entire head now should, should lift right off of the motor. Uh, you might have to tap it a little bit around with a mallet just to get the head gasket loosened up. Uh, you don't want to be prying anything because you don't want to mar the surface, the mating surfaces here. Uh, at which point you should be able to lift the head right up and off of the motor. And this is where we get our first look at the top of the pistons. We pull our head gasket off. As well as we get our first look at the, at the valves. And we're pretty dirty here, not unexpected. Again, this is a motor with uh, 65,000 miles on it. And, uh, is about what I would expect. So from here we start tearing into it. These are these are the main areas I was going to work on uh, since we are burning oil, and uh, I'll be inspecting the cylinders, cleaning all this up, and uh, probably working with a machine shop for any of the additional um, machining, resleeving, recoding, or determination that we may you know need a new head or or new valves. All right, so with a little bit of extra light here, we can take a look down into each of the cylinders. And I'll take some high-resolution photographs, which will give a better view, especially of the cylinder walls themselves. Not too concerned with the uh, amount of um, deposits and, uh, and crusty stuff on the top of the piston heads here. Pretty much, pretty much expected. But a quick look inside the cylinder, I'm seeing some marring uh, and uh, feeling with my fingers, you know, and kind of feel some marks in the uh, cylinder walls. I do see cross hatching. That's the nickel silicon coating, and that's what you want to see. If that nickel silicon coating is worn off, then you won't see cross hatch patterns in the cylinder walls. Um, so we do see that. But uh, yeah, this is uh, pretty ugly.